Hello, this is Lois Gray from North Highland College, UHI. UHI. Um, so today I want to show you how to write and compile a VHDL file using the model sim simulator that I showed you earlier how to install and download. Sorry, install and license. So if you've done as I suggested, you should have a model sim icon on your desktop. Um, if not, you will be able to find it in the search box, as with any other program. So if we open that, it doesn't take too long to load. I, mean, I suppose that might depend on your computer processor, but I found it was quite fast. Um, and you'll see a page like this when we start. Um, I would just click um, close to the help information. You don't really need that just now. So your page will look a bit like this, and where the um, data is going to be stored is going to be in this work directory, um, which is actually in the C drive in the model tech folder under a, a folder called example. That's fine, don't need to change any of that, that's all okay, we'll just live with that. So to be able to co compile and simulate programs, you need to put them into projects. So we'll start by creating a new project. So if we go File, New, Project, and we want to give that a name. So I'm going to call that Half Adder, because I think the first program you're doing is a Half Adder. When you're writing code of any kind, try not to use unusual characters or spaces in your titles. Um, this applies to MATLAB code as well. So give your programs and your folders names which don't have spaces, because some compilers um, and especially MATLAB can't cope with that. I'm not sure whether model sim can or not but anyway that's good good practice. Okay so we're going to call it half adder and you can see here this is where it's going to be stored in the model tech folder under examples. You can change that but I wouldn't recommend you bother and the default library name is work which is fine. So click OK to that and then we want to add a new file to that folder or to that library. So we're going to do create new file. If you had written the code before, you could do it through add existing file. But we're going to create a new file because we haven't done it already. And then we're going to give that a name. So again, I'm going to call that half badder. Um, and you don't need to change these bottom parts. It's a VHDL file and it's at the top level. So let's just click OK to that. And um, you can just close that now because we're not adding any more files at this stage. Might add another one later, but not just now. Um, so you can see here a few things. We're in the project folder or project tab down at the bottom here. Um, later on, we will look at clicking into the library tab, but not just now. Um, we've got this question mark here, which tells us that the file hasn't been compiled. The code hasn't been compiled. In fact, it hasn't actually been written. So to write um, the file, we'll double click on that. One other wee thing just to check is that our layout here is set to no design because you do have the option to set that to simu simulate as well, which we'll do later. But anyway, no design's fine just now. And double clicking half adder will bring up an editor window on the right hand side here. I'll just move my, oh, I can't move that. Oh, what's happened there? I thought I'd be able to move that somehow, but I can't. I'll just squash it a bit then. There we go, it'll be squashed in the corner there. So I've already written the code. I'm just going to um, paste it in here. So uh, Control V, I just copied and pasted, which is cheating. Um, what I'll be wanting you guys to do is to uh, do it from scratch. Okay, that didn't work. But what you can do is undock the window so we can see it more clearly. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to move it into the middle here. So you can see it. That's better. And then we can make it bigger. Um, you don't need to do this. I'm just doing this to show you in more detail what it's saying. So I'll just run through the code as well, just to remind you of what the code means, although you should have read your notes on this um, or, or watched the lecture video on this. So we've got the first part here where we're defining what other libraries will need in addition to the work library that the code's stored in. Um, nearly always you will need this in your code. 
um, the IEEE library, which contains a number of sort of sub libraries or header files essentially. Um, so we've got a standard logic 1164, it's useful to put that in. Um, standard logic arithmetic that allows us to do plus and minus. We're not really going to need it for this particular file, but uh, you might need it for some other things if you're doing something more complex. So it's not a bad idea to always include that. And the standard logic unsigned is always needed uh, because we're assuming that we're putting in logic inputs and taking out logic outputs. Um, this, that's what gives you the um, input and output definitions. So that's fine. And then you'll remember that all VHDL code consists of the entity, which is the building block to define the physical properties of the interfaces. So what ports are inputs, what ports are outputs, um, yeah, what kind of inputs they are, what kind of outputs they are. And then we also have an architecture which defines how the entity behaves. Okay, so we've got the entity definition and then we've got its architecture associated with that. So looking here, we've got an entity called half underscore adder. You can choose whatever name you like, but I'd suggest you use something sensible. Um, and these green parts here are the comments which you do need to put into all your code. Um, for most lines, because you're students, um, it's these lines that will help me to realize whether you understand what you're doing or not. So do put in as much comments as you feel are appropriate. So you can see here I've put in some comments just to show you what's happening here. We've defined the ports. So for our half adder, we have two input ports and two output ports. Um, we've got port A and B, which are inputs, and they're just standard logic. Um, so the standard logic is defined in this IEEE standard logic unsigned all library. Um, or header, and that just defines what is a logic zero, what's a logic one, what's an unconnected input, uh, what's a floating input, various things like that. That's all defined by this standard logic um, description here. Uh, and then sum and carry are both outputs, so you can see they're defined as outputs. Okay, oh, another thing to notice is notice these semicolons at the end of every line. Uh, you need that with VHDL code. Um, the exception is when you're opening a entity. So you can see entity half adder is. You're opening the entity there to define it. So there's no semicolon there. Um, and also when you're defining port descriptions. So you'll see here, there's no semicolon here, but there is at the end of the, so you're opening a bracket, but at the end of each description, there's a semicolon. With the exception of the last one, this is a very common fault. The last one, you can see here, the bracket comes before the semicolon. So that's different from the others in that brackets. Um, every, every entity needs to have an end statement. So we just have the end half adder here. So hopefully that's fairly straightforward. And then the next bit is to define the architecture. Now, you'll remember that if you looked at the notes, we've got different kinds of architectures. Um, the most simplest kind is the register transfer logic architecture, where you just define how each um, output behaves in terms of the very simple, basic combinational logic blocks. We do have more complex ar architectures that we will look, in, look at in the future, in particular, in particular a structural one, which might take a few combinational logic blocks and combine them in a structural um, overall component. So maybe two AND gates and an OR gate or, or something like that, all combined in a structure. And with the structural type of architecture, we define the connections between the gates. With the register transfer logic, RTL architecture, we define how each gate actually works. So need a begin statement. Um, um, this half adder statement here needs to match this one here. They need to be the same name. Um, it doesn't really matter if you call it RTL or structural or whatever. It will accept anything, but you do want your code to be sensible. So try and call it by what it actually is. And then we'll just define how the half adder works. So our carry output is equal to A and B. 
and our sum output is actually equal to the exclusive OR of A and B. So I've defined that in the long-winded version, but it would be possible there to just write A, X or B. That also works. Um, notice here that it's not just an equal sign, it's like a less than sign and an equals. That's important. But having said that, you, you can um, find uh, syntax errors using this tool and I'll show you how to do that as well. Okay, so if we're happy with all that, what you want to do is save that um, and then we'll put that to one side for the moment because I want to show you how to compile it. So to compile it, all you need to do is right click here and compile, select it or alternatively you can go to the compile thing and compile all or compile selected and by selected it will be the one that's highlighted in blue if you had more than one file so let's just do that and you'll see down here at the bottom here there's a like a command window that tells you what's going on I'm trying to drag that so you can see it better it's not very easy to see um, so if there's any errors they will come up here um, and you'll see also, if there's no errors, you'll get a tick here, which suggests that it's compiled correctly. So I'll just show you the same thing with some errors. Um, let's bring up the file again. Let's put in that we forget the semicolon there, for instance, which is a common fault. In fact, more commonly, semicolon there and brackets closed, which is wrong. Um, it won't pick up the new file until you click Save, so we want to save that. Um, you'll see here it's greyed out to show you that it's been saved. And then if we try compiling that again, you'll see the question marks come back because we did some edit there. And if we try compiling that again, we will get an error down here. Compile of half out of VHD failed with one error. So you can actually find out what the error is. It does try to help you with that. If you double click on the error, um, sorry, if you click once on there and then click on the error here, it will yellow out where it thinks the error is. Sometimes it might be the line above where the yellow bar is. It's not always the highlighted bar. Um, it could be the one just before that. But in this case, it is actually a highlighted bar. And if we look at what it says here, it does tell us what's wrong. Um, expecting an identifier near the bracket sign. Okay, so that just means it was expecting another input. It didn't know that was the end. So if we put in that, just correct that again. Remember to save it. And compile it again. And it says it's fine and you get the tick. Okay, so that's that video. Um, I'll show you later how to write the test bench or go through the test bench program with you as well.